I gotta tell you, this new gold label DC Multiverse Joker really sucks. Your blood? Stick around to find out whether or not this vampire is worth hunting for your display. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, Subscribe to all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting off with the packaging and the Joker's cardboard and plastic coffin is pretty straightforward. Name and logo down here, gold label up here, name and logos on the side, barcode down here for those of you struggling to find them because, you know, Walmart, and on the back some really cool artwork. If you were to ask me to imagine Joker as a vampire, this is exactly what would come to mind. And as for packaging overall, I think that they deserve one whole point. Moving on to presentation, Vampire Joker stands at seven and a quarter inches. First things first in this figure is mostly just a reissue of the criminal from Batman the Three Jokers. The only new body parts are a monstrous head and pair of claw-like bloody hands. In that respect, he's kind of similar to the zombie Joker from the DC Direct DC's line. That said, while the suit on the original release was a high gloss, almost violet blue, with knees that didn't match the rest of the figure, I might add. This figure suits a much more even toned purple, and no mismatched plastic issues here. With some part swaps we'll be looking at later, this would make for a really great standard Joker. The only real issue being the blood on the collar and tie. And to McFarlane's credit, it does look like they did a pretty good job of matching it. This is a much paler, more bile green than we're used to seeing for the Joker shirt, but for an undead version of the character, I think that that works in its favor. To me, these shades of green are just a lot more sickly. Compare that to the more verdant green on a figure like, say, the clown. On that no body wise these two are the exact same figure, just with a different jacket overlay. Finally, focusing on what's new, I really like these hands. Not only are they claw-like, but the bloody paint is a high gloss and looks pretty realistic. But obviously, the star of the show is this gruesome face. The eyes are particularly bloodshot, with the eyebrows extra archy. I love all that lividity purple in the cheek, and of course, there's just that straight-up demonic grin. Similar to the Dark Knight Joker, you can see scars up the sides like a Glasgow smile. It kind of gives me the idea the Joker's entire head could unhinge like Pennywise. And the extra blood around the already ruby lips really adds something. While there is a lot of reuse, the reuse makes sense, and the new parts more than make up for it. For a presentation, I'm giving Vampire Joker one whole point. Moving on to posability, and since it's been a while since I've looked at the criminal, it's not a bad idea to revisit the articulation here. From the top and his head's in a dumbbell joint, I will say I have found it to be a bit stiff, but hey, he is technically a corpse after all. That being said, Joker can only look up this far, this far down, pretty decent tilt, and all the way around. Moving on down, he can raise his arm up over 90 degrees. You can't really see them because of the jacket, but there are rotator cuffs in there. Of course, he has bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and McFarlane wrist balls nicely hidden by the cuff. Moving to the middle, and there is a diaphragm joint in a dumbbell waist, but they are very much obstructed by this coat. As such, he can only arch back this far and hunch forward this far. He also doesn't really get much in the way of tilt, but he does get twist. Below the long coat, though, and he has McFarlane-style hips, he can kick this high. As we can see, once again, the coat gets in the way, and he can split this wide with, again, the coat getting in the way. Really good twist in the hips, though. And then moving down, we got our double-jointed knees, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and pivot. It's not that the articulation's bad, it's just a little bit limited. Even so, for posability, I am only giving Vampire Joker half a point. Moving on to playability, and Joker comes with a trading card and a figure stand. Pause here if you want to read it, but I'll let you know in advance that this is just a write-up of the Joker himself and has nothing to do with the DC Vampire story. More importantly, Joker comes with this mallet. It's a tribute to the mallet that came with the Superpowers Joker, which I sadly do not have. Though I do have this one from DC Universe Classics, but I've got a say I absolutely adore this new one. McFarlane's done a great job of making this look like an actual face carved in wood. Wonderfully fiendish details. We get the gigantic J on either end, and of course the long Pinocchio-like handle. Vampire Joker can hold it like so, but I'm honestly more curious about how it looks with other figures. First up, and here we 
have Arkham Asylum. Next up is Rebirth, which thanks to the colorful costume does seem a bit more natural. As for Mortal Kombat 11, the more weapons the better, I say. Of the three Jokers releases, it seems the most appropriate with the clown. That being said, I think it makes a pretty fun addition to Infinite Frontier. Obviously my favorite's gonna be my own custom kit bash. And on that subject, lastly, here we have Death of the Family. Speaking of Death of the Family, this one's unfortunately glued in place, so I'm not going to be able to use it later on for the head swaps. But playability is more than just showing off my fancy new motorized turntable. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. First off, and for the only other undead Joker I have, and here we have the DC Essentials Deceased version. Otherwise, in the spirit of keeping things simple, I'm going to be mainly focusing on Batman comparisons. Here's Detective Comics 1000, Arkham Knight Batman from Batman. Batman Arkham Knight, and the Grim Knight. Now I know Batman's anti-gun, but I thought this could be kind of a fun Monster Hunter version. Like maybe the guns are all full of silver bullets and things like that. For another potentially fearless vampire hunting Batman, and here we have Dark Detective. Leastways, I think it could be a fun vampire hunter version. Here we have the ever popular Three Jokers version, and the ever so slightly too short Rebirth version. Next up is Page Punchers, which is also a bit short, but very well detailed. Arkham City, with legs that are so slender he could probably stake Joker through the heart with them. And finally, my new favorite until the Nightfall version comes out, Blue and Gray Hush. For a toothy demonic clown comparison, and here we have Pennywise by NECA, but for the King of the Vampires, here we have the ultimate Dracula also by NECA. For a relative scale comparison, here's Vampire Joker with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man and his Creature of the Night Midnight Blue Armor. Not to worry though, I know that you're very curious to see some head swaps. Going in order of release, and first up is Arkham Asylum. I would say that this head is too big for this body, but let's be honest, the Arkham Asylum head is pretty gigantic. I will say that the ganglier proportions do help him to look more ghoulish. Other way around, and you'll need to get creative because the pegs don't match. Also, you'll need to find some way of raising up the head. Next up is DC Rebirth. I don't think it works quite as well as it did with Arkham Asylum. Here, the size of the head seems distracting, and it also sits too low. Conversely, once again, you'll need to get creative, but fortunately, this head does sit a bit higher than Arkham Asylum. For one of my favorites, and here we have Mortal Kombat 11. This head fits great and I really love how it looks. Even the slight differences in the skin tone are barely noticeable. If you're gonna do it though, I'd recommend getting the bloody variant to make it even better. Other way around, and this has the potential of being my favorite standard Joker. Paint the shirt a darker green, then make the tie in the vest yellow, and of course swap out the vampire hands, and I think this would be something pretty special. Moving on to the three Jokers, I figure we'll get the criminal out of the way first, because this is basically the same figure that difference isn't that great, mainly just the shirt and lapels, and of course that glossier, more violet blue color. Or should I say, violent blue? Other way around, and there's not much of a difference here either, although in general I do prefer the suit better on the vampire version. Next up is the very colorful clown. Seeing this sinister face on such a colorful body is interesting, and I suppose if you wanted to try to take a razor to those teeth, you could turn him into a more traditional joker, otherwise something about the clash of tones is kinda cool. Just like with Mortal Kombat, Combat 11, this has the potential of being a really great standard Joker also. Again, just a bit of repainting. Keep in mind, of course, the sacrifice you'd be making to articulation. And then rounding out the three Jokers is my favorite, the Comedian. Now this is a vampire Joker. The pop collar of the coat kind of evokes Dracula's cape, and the long flowy coat makes him look extra mysterious. And that's to say nothing of just how creepy this head sculpt already is. The painted on shadows and tiny glints for eyes kind of already look like a vampire. Combined with the bloody clawed hands, and this is pretty creepy all on its own. For one that I'm not sure if it's going to work because of how small the neck joints are, and here we have Infinite Frontier, there's a kind of laid-back decadence to this one that I think works for a vampire. Again, I see the pop collar and I can't help but think of Dracula, but considering he's holding his own eyeball, you'll need to do something about the hands. Just like Arkham Asylum and Rebirth, you'll need to get creative this way around. Even if you do, though, I feel like this head is just a bit too small. Lastly, here's Heath Ledger from The Dark Knight. Automatically, this one benefits from a more muted color scheme, though you would have to repaint the neck. Otherwise, this is still a good generic enough Joker body that I think you could make it work for a comic book version. Unfortunately, I don't think I can say the same thing the other way around. As I said, my Heath Ledger review, this body's just a bit too spindly. 
Between the superpower style mallet, the head swap potential, and the overall fun of the Joker as a vampire, this figure's an all around slam dunk. For her playability, I'm giving this Joker one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. If you can find this Walmart exclusive on shelves, it'll set you back about 20 bucks. But I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that this figure was a gift from our friend Tony Alvarez. Tony, if you're watching, thank you so much. This figure is my idea of what I wish all Walmart exclusives were. Which is to say that it's a fun addition, but doesn't feel quite as necessary as, say, the comic book style Shazam. If you happen to find this vampire skulking around Walmart, definitely let him in. For price, I'm giving Vampire Joker one whole point for a grand total of 4.5 out of 5. Are you picking up Vampire Joker? And if so, what do you think of the vampire line in general? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.